Hey, it's back with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Tuesday, March the 12th. This will be our chart lesson for today. Um, it was mostly downhill today. We started off in a trading range, so to speak, uh, in this tight range right here. We traded down into that. Um, generally, I mean, really, it was just a bigger trading range, and we kind of got stuck in the lower half, and we traded to the upper half. There's a reversal pattern right here, and then off to the races down. We had this channel working down. Uh, we finally broke it, um, two, and you can see there's one leg correction, then the second leg, two legs down to a new low, and that's what you usually expect, and then now, look, you're trending the other way. Uh, somebody sent me an email asking about the wedge around 12. Let me look at that email again. Around 12, 17. Um, evidently somebody was... 12, 17 is right in this range. But I, I guess you might could see a wedge there. I mean, really, it's going to be like that right there. And then maybe they were looking. So I guess maybe you might could see a wedge there. But if you're looking at the bigger picture and you're seeing the price action, I mean, this is exactly what you expect. I mean, we were in the range. We, we followed the range rules. We broke out, started trending. And... Um, then we were we broke the trend line here, came back up and tested the breakout area, and then a couple legs down to a new low, and now we're trending up, and now you can see there's a new trend handed up, and uh, so you know, looking at this wedge here, the big thing is is this is this is really just a lot of, uh, you know, we broke this little trend line right here, and we came back to test it, and then we sold off again. That's really all that is. And it's more congestive in there than anything, but you know we're still looking for a retest, so we're still supposed to be looking for shorts after the break of this, especially this setup right here. Um, even if you didn't see these right in here, uh, you got congestion here. You got a failed break out, and then we tried to go higher twice more. You got a failed second entry long. That's a trap, and look at that. Those traps are the greatest thing. Um, and really, I, I didn't mark anything much after that point. Um, no real good setups down here. This is all congestion. And uh, now you got a two-legged correction back to the EMA and the trend line. We'll see how that works out. It hasn't really been a – the best setup really was to enter on this break lower right here, right around the EMA, um, and you would have already been out. But we'll see how it sets up. So um, really no real – there's a second entry that triggered, but that's such a bearish bar. You don't want to be going long up here. You had to get in back here somewhere. So, um, and if you did, you're, you know, you're probably already out of that trade. We'll see how that one works out. My guess is uh, that's a reversal pattern. That's a double test of that. So we could break and go lower here again and then come back and test, but we'll see how it sets up before the thing closes. But this is all pretty standard. And, uh, and what you got to do, I, I get a lot of questions about this, and what you got to do is when you're, it doesn't matter what the big picture is, when you're in this trading range, you got to follow range rules. And when you start trending, you got to follow trend rules. You got to be aware of this strong support here if you're entering right here, but there's enough room to really enter and exit before you get to the lows here, no problem. And do you know it's going to go right on through like that? No, and you can see it did find some uh, support right there momentarily. Uh, there really was a short here, but the, I don't like that setup at all, other than the fact that it's a failed second entry long that trapped people. But, you know, after that move down, there's too big a chance you're coming back to the EMA and the trend line to be entering again there. And you can see it continued on lower, uh, but you had to enter up back up in here somewhere. And you actually could have entered here on a breakout pullback short. There would have been nothing wrong with that. But... Um, I didn't take it, so I didn't mark it, but it is a breakout pullback short right there, and I guess I might as well go ahead and circle that in green. But, you know, basically we're, you know, we're trend now we're trending down, so you want to be looking for any kind of with trend rules 
Um, you've got a clear channel right here, and you can see that. And notice we didn't quite touch it right there, and we didn't bounce. And then finally we, we touched it twice right here, and we come back to the upper side. There's a short right here, but I didn't like this one because this thing has just been so far overdone, and this is all, you know, the, the, the first trigger was here, and that ends in a doji. Then you got one, two, three, four overlapping bars. Two of them are dojis, so it's real dangerous going short there. Uh, it might have... One, two, three. Now it would have been a four tick failure to made a double bottom and then and then failed on you. So if you did enter here when you got this reversal bar, I would have exited. I, I mean, it's just not really a good setup. This is why I, a lot of times I'll tell people until you get a reversal, um, the only way you might have entered this one would be to enter here because there was a failed break, but we you know we didn't quite get to the EMA or the trend line. And when you've been that far away from for that long, it's just just like right here, it's just not a good entry. And if you had have entered there, you would have gotten one, two, three, still a four tick failure. So you never really had that second entry trap here on this one. So a lot of people were probably leery. A lot of people were probably looking for a bigger bounce here. Um, I know I was looking for a bounce here. I actually went long down here. I exited all my shorts and went long right here. And uh, quick, easy scalp. And I wanted to enter again here, but I didn't like this because of all this overlap. Was a really good move. Evidently, they trapped a lot of people right there, and you can see that. And my guess is they trapped them below that big bearish bar right there, and you can see they all had to exit right there. And all and everybody else that was short that weren't already out started exiting, and that's why it surges back up like that. But we're still looking for shorts because we haven't had a. That's the first break of that channel. And that's an obvious channel there. Hopefully you could see that. Um, there was a second entry short on a bigger picture right here. Plus this is a retest. So you're looking to get short right up in here. Um, it pulled back a little bit, but as long as your stop was above the signal bar right there, you're good. You got another chance to enter right here on a second entry. This one was a little more risky uh, because you're closer to these lows and so forth, and it's not the best setup. But it was still it was a second entry short when you're looking for a retest of the low. And, um, you know, I wasn't quite sure if we had a trend line here or not. You got to draw it, and you can see we obviously did because we bounced right in there. Uh, but it went on down quick enough and, and was easy scalp, no runners. They come back and get the runners, uh, and they took the runners out on everything here. Uh, on, you actually could have got some runner on this one. This one would have had a runner. This tray would have had a runner. And he, uh, this one actually did not right here if you entered below this bar. Um, so uh, there were a few runners on these. Uh, no runner on this one. Another uh, entry here. And this is just a two-legged pullback. It's a second entry short. Notice here's your new low. First entry, pullback, second entry. Um, this is also where you were finding resistance up here. That That's a big reversal type bar. Um, it was worth going short right there if you wanted to. It took it a few minutes to work down, but as long as you kept your stop above the signal bar, you were good. Uh, then we kind of had this little double top and another little trap, and this was the trap right here, a failed second entry long, big reversal bar, close on its very low. You can't ignore that trade. you got to take that one, and that's another easy with runners. Another easy, a really easy trade. I love that setup right there. Um, it's two times to go, two tries to go higher out of all this overlap and all. And I'll be honest with you, I never saw the wedge there. I can, I, you know, after playing with it a little bit, I could see how you could see that. But that's why you got to be able to read the former price action. You should know what this move is here. Notice how when we broke lower, we never came back and tested that. And then suddenly when we start going higher, that should be your first target to retest. First, this should be actually your first target right here, this this high. And you can see it, it hesitated there. And then if we get through there, your next target is this breakout area. And that's exactly where we went to. And so you got to understand what prices are doing. So uh, if you're looking at a wedge over here, you're, you're just you're searching too hard for a pattern or something um, is basically what I would say to you. Um, and you can see we're still trying to go higher over here. Actually, we did trade up, and uh, 
turn by that's a really that that's that's a really strong trout more than likely to the downside right there because that's a huge reversal bar but no way you want to be going short down here see what they do to people this is a great example you know look how bearish that looks and it's a it's really almost a failed second entry long so but the trend is up you can't be looking for shorts and you and even if you see one you can't take one right here. You got to wait on a better trap than that. You don't want to be going short right here at the EMA, the lows. Look how everything's above the EMA. Um, just a horrible place to go short, even though that's a huge bearish reversal bar. And there's a second entry short there off a of double top. You could have really, you know, tempted to go short there. But the problem is now you got a trend line working up, and you don't want to be shorting against the, you know, this is why we don't counter trend trade. And you can see, I guarantee you, a lot of people got trapped there. And if they can work this a tick or two higher, this thing's probably going to explode up out of there, too. We'll just have to see how it plays out. But that's pretty much what we had today. And, you know, what I want to show you is when I came in this morning, about 7.30 or so, and this trade was really early, early this morning. I probably shouldn't have even marked it. This was really the first trade after 7 o'clock. And there's not enough, you know, I don't like going short here because this is obvious strong resistance. Uh, there's not much room by the time you go short there. Too many overlapping bars. And then you could have gone along here, but again, you don't have much room before the highs right across here because at that point, this would have been right there. And you can see that little range. And that's a failed break higher chance to go short right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Then a double top, reversal pattern, a second entry to go short. Um, plus, you got these highs up here, and, and this is where you were looking for. These were the high, these were the overnight, or the highs from yesterday, a little double top. And you can see that's right where we found resistance. So that's, that should have been your target you were looking for, maybe even up here. But we never, we never could get there again. Uh, it was too strong. But when we came in this morning... This is what, well, let me just move this out of your way. This is what we're looking at. And you can see, um, and guess what? We bounce right off that. Then you get one tick lower. So a chance to go long right there, and off it goes. And this, and this is not the prettiest setup bar, but you got this trap down here. It's a failed, look, you got first, you got, you made a new low right there. First entry short, second entry short. Um, and then it bounces off those lows. But really, more than anything, you got a chance to get in close to closer to the low side with hopefully enough room to get out by the high side. So you got an entry there. And uh, notice that it always, you know, when you get that set up, you generally will, it'll get enough ticks. And you can see, even though it hesitated right there, it got that pretty quick. Um, then, then we're still in a range. You can see that range right there. Look at that. And then we break out. And you might have been tempted to go short right there, but again, one, two, three overlapping bars. This one's a doji. Uh, the odds are it's probably going to pull back a little bit and snap back. And you see it went one tick lower and it trapped everybody. Then it went higher. Then you got, this is actually where I got short on a limit order right there. Boom, turns down. But either way, you got that nice reversal bar. It's a failed break higher. It's a second entry short. Notice this new low. First entry right there. Second, if it breaks below there, is a second entry. And look, and, uh, it actually snapped back pretty quick. So if you didn't get in here, which most of you probably shouldn't have because you shouldn't be trading that way uh, if you're not really good at reading the price action and consistently profitable. But as long as you had your stop above that signal bar, you were good to go. But you definitely got to enter over here on the second entry. And you really could have entered below that bar but it's better to wait on the better bar there it is and then off it goes and um, if you entered right here guess what you had runners on that one and if you entered right here you got runners so you could have ridden this all the way down you're talking about 4950 to 1550 entry area so you know you're talking about six points five or six points easy that you could have picked up here. Um, this is just a little congestion area, a pullback, a breakout of it that fails, and look at that big reversal bar. And you got to be thinking we're coming to at least here, and that's and actually 
there were your closes at that point right there so that's where your line should have been by the end uh, you get the most touches with closes right in there and that's right where we bounced and look at there that's right where we bounce again easy scalp uh, the breakout pullback short I didn't like it as much um, these trades are not as they're good setups they, they'll make you money most of the time if you're watching it closely and following the rules but they fail more than uh, some of the other trades, so I take them less often, and um, and I you know, but that's a good setup, and you can see it took on off. Um, again, you know, you don't want to be going long in here until we get a break of the trend line and a retest. So you're still looking for short, but I explained why this was not such a good place. But uh, you know, you can see this. Uh, you can see that failed break out there. Um, you can see that pullback. You wouldn't have got your trend line till right here, though. But you're you're still trading the range at this point, and this is off the top of the range. Plenty of room to get out before you get to the low. And then you should have had that line. And if you drag it down, um, at first I thought we were overshooting right there, and and we really might could have been. Uh, those could just be overshoots, but I'm thinking the channel was here. But it doesn't matter either way. Um, it still gives you the same thing. They're they're just overshoots. Um, but this was the first time we came back, and we just never really got a good setup here. You might have taken that second entry, like I said, but you can see it failed. And um, when you saw that reversal bar, that would have been a clue to maybe exit if you were in that trade. Uh, but you shouldn't have been going long there unless you really, you know, or you shouldn't have gone short here unless you did it right here and then I still don't think you got out I think it was a four tick failure so uh, and that's a first entry I would have been tempted to take this one if you took it on a limit order you were fine but if you waited to go below the bar it just it would have been a failure and that's all there is to it and but it's just not really a great setup so um, then your pullback right here to test it there's your reversal your second entry short, another two-legged correction, second entry short, a retest of that possible trend line right there. And you can see if you drag that up, there's probably the high side. We probably overshot it right there. And it may be a little flatter than that. It might have been more like that right there. I don't even know if you can get a channel there, but you got to always draw your trend line uh, off those first two swings and kind of pay attention to it. It's really off of that close right there, I think, off the close of that bar. And uh, and we broke below it. We came back. That's the retest. And then off we go down to make the second, second leg down to a new low. And then notice that we've been trending higher. We're really finding strong resistance right here, though. That's That's... That's where we were had support earlier today, and it's still acting as resistance. We haven't got through it yet, so we're really struggling to get through that. It's late in the day. The market's about to close, so my guess is we're going to close right in this little mess here if we don't break higher first. So, uh, but you you can't you got to look at the bigger picture, but at the same time you got to pay attention to what you're doing. And notice that we traded down into this little range, so that gives you a short bias to begin with. And um, so, and here we go. And then when we break out of here, we're definitely now on a short buy. So you're still got a buy to the short side, and you're looking for prices to fall. And um, and again, that was about it for today before we got to noon, and, and I was done. And, and there really just haven't been any good setups. But you see, we've been rallying up. It's following the rules. We broke this channel, two new legs to a low. We reverse. And you never know when your two legs are in. I mean, this could have ended up being one leg, and we might have even gone lower. That's why you got to draw your trend lines. But follow the rules and pay attention to them, and, uh, and you know, you're going to be better off. And like I said, when we first opened up, you, you know, that's obvious that's a range right there. It's it's It really was right there at the time. And that's real obvious that's a range. If you can't see that, um, you got to pay attention to it. So... Okay, um, had a slight interruption there. Uh, one other question I got today was somebody says, asked me when you're in a trading range, you know, how do you know 
Let me let me find that email. Let me just look and see what exactly what the question was so I can answer it properly. When in a bigger trading range where you have space for temporary trends, if you have a down sloping line but also an up sloping line, which both get respected and bounce off of, how do you trade it? Um, this is one you need to pay close attention to because I talk about this a lot, but people tend to miss it. Generally what happens when you're in a trading range, you're only interested in entering on the extremes. You're looking for prices to go from one side to the other. And first of all, you need room to be able to get out. So you got to get in real close to the edge or it has to be bigger. But once you're coming off these lows, you're looking for prices to go back to the highs. And at this point, the highs were here. But once we got through there and tested it, guess where your next high is going to be? Up here where the previous highs were. And you can see that. But let's say now we've reached up here. What are we looking to happen? We're looking for prices to trend back this way. So, But you're still wanting to get in close to these edges. Generally, you don't want to get in in the middle unless you, you know, you've got plenty of room left. And even then, it's, it's kind of risky. This was a pretty good one because this is really a two-legged pullback to the EMA. It's really a trading range that prices broke out of and failed. You got a big reversal bar. So there's a couple of different reasons why this trade, why you might have wanted to enter in the middle or closer to the low side here where you usually wouldn't have. And hopefully that makes sense. But, you know, once you're coming off this high, you're looking for prices to come back down to the low. You definitely don't want to be going long here. It could turn and go up, but you don't want to risk that. You want to be looking, you know, you want to be staying with the expectation. The expectation is once it reaches the high side, then it's coming to the low side. And you can see that right here. This, this, this look how prices were going from low to high to low to high to low to high to low. And, you know, sometimes you'll get a bigger range where it'll do the same thing, low to high to low to high to low to high. And so that's your, your I guess I should say your bias is working down, so your bias is to look for prices to come back to the low side. Uh, but generally it's just not very good to enter in the middle unless you get some kind of, you know, additional sales. When you can find more than one reason to enter a trade, that just makes it stronger. And you can see this right here. Not only was it a two-legged pullback, but guess what? It tested this previous area in hell and turned down on the tick. So you got to figure we're coming to here. And uh, and you might have even had this down to here by now because now your closes are down here and you're getting most of your touches and your closes down here. And look where it went to, exactly to the tick. Uh, it actually went one tick further, but on the close it was to the tick. And uh, so that's what you're kind of looking at as far as knowing which where your bias is you know there's always a bias and uh, you can see here we we still continue to go higher here uh, but that's because the trend is up now the bias is up and uh, the ones that are getting trapped are the ones that are counter trend trading or trading against the bias and the same thing here and you know even though this was a really strong the reason that looks so strong is because there were so many shorts that had to cover when that failed second entry Entry short came right there, and they people had to exit. They started hitting stops, and that's why it burst up like that. That's not really real a real bullish move where you're drawing in a lot of new longs. It's more stop running than anything, and the scalpers jumping on trying to take advantage of that quick burst. Uh, so, and you notice it gets up here, and then it loses all its steam again. That's why this is not really a bullish move. So, as as most people would think it is. It's more of a stop run. They're hitting stops from all these people that got short uh, on the way down here, and suddenly they realize it's it's pulling back, and if they want to hold on to their profits, they got to exit, and they start exiting. And what happens is most of them give it to back all the way back to here, and they exit, and then guess what? It reverses and goes right back where they thought, and that's what weak traders do. They're constantly on the wrong side of the market, and they're constantly searching for entries, when you need to wait for the key entry points and where are the key entry points listen to this one real closely it's a lot when you're in a range is at the highs and the lows the, the strong resistance strong support that moves up to this area right up here on this particular move uh, that's where your entries are going to be strong support strong resistance and when you got a trend line strong resistance 
strong support except stay away from the counter turn trade so forget this side unless you really know what you're doing because you you know if you tried to get in here you got trapped um unless you use a limit order right there and then it still wasn't a very good trade it was a four tick failure uh, because it's a counter trend trade and the, all the momentum's to the downside and when you start going against the momentum that's the that's the beauty of trading with the trend is that you can get you can actually get your timing off uh, and still get it right and still have a winning trade where if you're counter trend trading and you're wrong you're going to lose money there ain't no there's no ifs ands or buts about it if you're wrong on a counter trend trade you will lose money um nine times out of ten so don't risk it stay with the trend stay with the bias and uh, only enter at key entry points and you'll do a whole lot better trading and that's I really don't want any clearer way to put that than than to say it that way and you know you hear me say that a lot but I think it goes either goes over people's heads or they just don't quite understand what I'm trying the point I'm trying to get across and so uh, when you're in a range, you can enter on both sides. Strong support, strong resistance. When you're in a channel or a trend, you only want to enter with a trend at the at the same place. Strong resistance or strong support. And notice if you'd have entered, you could have entered any of those blindly. You could have entered any of these blindly except for this one. Um, you couldn't have entered that one, that particular one. But they're always going to fail at some point. But you could have entered blindly. Uh, once you had these highs, really once you had that one once, twice, um, you might have even got got in that one. It depends on how that bar, at least twice, maybe three times. But look down here at the low side. You could have entered once, twice, three times, four times. Uh, you could have just entered blindly. And when you got up here to this next one, you could have entered blindly and still made money. And uh, all the way down through here, if, you, if you'd have entered blindly right at the resistance area you really wouldn't have got a chance to hear but it would have worked and then coming back up this one you could have bought any of these right at the strong support and bought it blindly and got it right and um, so it's always better to stay with the trend stay with the bias and uh, again if it's a range you can enter on both sides but if it's a trend you only want to enter with a trend because it's too risky entering on the other side you might make money uh, if you're really good at it, but most of the time, you, you, you know, you need to be able to read the price action real well. And most people that are learning right now can't read it that well. They're just, they're they're having a hard time finding the range and making sure they got the right channels and things like that. So just keep working on it. Don't be, there's always going to be a good trade. So if you, if you're not real, if you're real eager to enter, you're going to find yourself entering too early and entering in the wrong places. Just find your trends and your strong support and resistance and be patient and wait on prices to get there. Look what being patient for prices to get here did. You could have ridden this all the way down. Even on the on a strong trend, if you'd have sold up here, it would have worked. But you were better off to buy. And you can see we're still trying to work higher. The market's opened back up again now, and we're trying to work higher. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. I'm going to wrap it up. This is almost 30 minutes today. But um, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.